Hey guys, it's JJ, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about something I haven't discussed in a while here on the channel, and that is my two rental properties. So, quick backstory here for those of you that may not be familiar, I have two rental properties that are in Kansas City, Missouri. I do not live in Kansas City, Missouri, so I have a property manager that runs those two properties for me. And I've gotten quite a few questions from some of you guys asking, what are the updates on the rental properties? Do you still have them? Do you still own them? How much are they paying you? Stuff like that. So that's exactly what we're gonna talk about in today's video. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so let's start off with the first ever investment property my wife and I purchased back around three years ago. It was in 2019, so almost four years now, geez. So we purchased this property, found it on the MLS. It was in an area of Kansas City that I'm kind of familiar with. Nice area, good place for rentals, kind of like blue collar area. I would say probably like a C class neighborhood, maybe a low B minus neighborhood. Um, but house had good bones, didn't need much work. I mean, you can see we did some exterior work on this picture. We took down like these um, window coverings and stuff like that. And there was some yard work we had to do and some there was some like maintenance issues I had going on inside the house that the wife and I were up there for a whole weekend. I think we were there for like three days nonstop, like working, you know, 15 hour days on those days and got to give a shout out to my wife here because she was pregnant with my daughter whenever we were doing this. We were painting cabinets, just so much going on in this house for that weekend. I'm actually shocked at how much we got done because I did a lot to this house in just a matter of three days you know, working from before the sun rises till after the sun goes down. Now, this property, I will say, has not been, you know, they always say your first property is not going to make you rich, and that is 100% true. So what we're going to look at is my actual spreadsheets that I use to use my bookkeeping for that I send to my tax guy. So I split out each property that I own in its own separate spreadsheet, and then we can look at exactly how my numbers stack up on this property. And I'll say this one, this first property has been a good one. It's gone up in value. Uh, I bought it at like 89,000. It's currently could probably sell on the market for 150. Um, so, you know, I've had some nice appreciation in the property. Uh, cash flow wise has been a little, and eh, I would have liked cash flow to be better. You'll find that out here in a second. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first property and you guys will get an idea of kind of how it looks on a cash flow basis. So again, this is what I use to for my bookkeeping for my businesses, my rental properties, everything. I do it all by hand in Excel. I know it seems a little outrageous probably, but I tried to use QuickBooks and personally just not a fan. So you can see start off of 2022, I had renters. I was charging them $8.95 in rent. And then April, I did have a vacancy because these renters left. And then I increased the rents to 1050. This is 1365 here because they started renting sometime in April. So they paid a little bit more upfront for that last week in April, I believe they moved in. But since then, they've been paying consistently every single month. I think they're like usually like the second or third of the month type payers, uh, which I don't really care as long as they're paying me every single month. That's all I care about. And if we scroll down here, you can see I had some big uh, maintenance expenses in April whenever they moved out. There was some cleaning. Uh, there was a couple things that needed to be updated on my end that was expense for me. And then the big expense here, I had like a $900 new water heater that needed to be installed. So that's why there's that large expense there. I had some like little minor maintenance issues here and there, but that's why I keep all my cash in my real estate checking account. It has its own checking account. I manage that every single month. Just make sure everything's looking all right. And all of this cash that I earn from these rental properties stays in that checking account to one, help provide in case of a major expense happens, new AC unit, you know, I need a new roof, whatever that may be. So kind of like money for my CapEx items. And then also it will be, it's being built up for future rental properties. I can use that cash from these rental properties to go and buy more rental properties and just kind of snowball and hopefully, you know, five, 10 years down the road, that number in that account is quite a bit higher than it is today. But as far as how much I've earned from this first rental property, over the course of 2022, I came out ahead by a little over a thousand bucks because again, I had some of those bigger expenses. I mean, I didn't have any income for the month of April and then that was my biggest month for expenses. So I was, you know, that's a, that's a $2,800 a month that I didn't get anything that I had to send money out. So, you know, that, that kind of sucks. Um, but Hey, that's, that's the name of the game, you know, and like not every year you'll have big expenses and some years I'll have even bigger expenses. Last year I got hit with a 
a sewer uh, fix that I had to do some spot repairs on my sewer line for this property. So that I, I didn't even, it wasn't even cash flow positive last year in 2021. So this house is, uh, it's been, you know, not the, I would say it's not been the greatest, but it's not been the worst either. I've, I've been cash flow positive since I've owned it, but there's always something popping up with this property. But again, I think I'm getting to the point where I fixed enough stuff on it. I do know I'm going to need an AC unit soon. So I'm prepping for that and I'm saving up money for that. I know it's coming. But this is a house that I think I could hold for 20 years and it will still be pumping me out, you know, income every single year, as long as, you know, I don't have any major, major expenses. So that is the first rental property. That's the first one my wife and I've ever purchased. Uh, learned a lot with this property. You know, it's nice having that uh, property manager to kind of really take care of everything. Because I'll be honest with you guys, with this property manager, I know some people don't want to use them or whatever, but she charges me a certain percentage. And with that, I mean, she is a boss, man. Like she does everything for me. I literally get my money deposited into my account every single month and I may be on the phone with her and you know if something pops up you know for billing wise or if she has a question on how I want to handle a maintenance issue if it's above 250 bucks so stuff like that usually you know it's it's maybe maybe an hour every couple months because you know I got to take time to do bookkeeping but that maybe it takes me like 10 minutes to do that for both properties so maybe an hour a month I would say I spend on this not e I know it's not even that but Average everything up. I would say about an hour a month is what I spend on this to earn, you know, the thousand bucks here from this one single property. So now moving on to the second property. And again, guys, these are both thumbnails from videos I have out on the channel. Um, I did a vlog on this property, kind of like the steps I did to buy to purchase this property. This was actually a townhome. So I own this unit right here, this end unit. There's three other units on the side that are owned by other people. I think they're owned all by investors. I do have an HOA with this. It's a $90 now. I just raised it this year. It's a $90 HOA monthly fee. Some stuff I did to this one. This one was almost turnkey. I actually I moved, I removed these bushes. I just completely got rid of them. Um, I did a couple other like maintenance issues that were going on that needed to be fixed and updated here in this property. I spent a week in here as well when I closed on this one. So I live on the St. Louis side of Missouri. And that's why I'm able to drive to these properties in Kansas City, do the items that I need to do, get them rent ready, and then I can turn around and, you know, hand it off to my property manager. And if there's any items I didn't get to, well, she just hires it out to go get it fixed. So it's 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 not bad. I, I like making the trip up there because I can get some things checked off the list to save me, you know, quite a bit of money up front versus paying somebody to go through and do all those. So here's the townhome we just looked at. These tenants have been in here for over a year. They just renewed their lease last month, I believe it was. And currently I'm charging $1,195 in this unit. I also do provide a washer and dryer in this unit too, which I'm debating whenever these tenants leave. I'm thinking about selling the washer and dryer because I've already had issues with it. I've had to spend money on fixing and updating things with that washer and dryer. And I don't want to buy another one either. I think I'm just going to sell it on Marketplace and then I'll you know, have the next tenants have to bring their own washer and dryer so I don't have to worry about it. The only reason I provided one is because they were there whenever I purchased the unit and I wasn't really expecting it to have such a, oh, I mean, it's not a huge issue, but I had like a $200 expense with, I think the dryer this year. So I'm like, that's $200 I didn't have to spend if it wasn't my washer and dryer and the tenants had to take care of it. So I'm probably going to do that whenever these tenants leave, whenever that may be, but they just signed another year lease. So we'll see how it goes. But this property has been bang, bang of a property since I purchased this. So I purchased this back in 2020, I believe. And so I've owned this for about two years now. And this year for 2022, I earned a total of $5,830.32. So almost six grand. This property property has paid me in straight cash this year. And every single month, luckily, has been positive. This month was close, $12.45. But you can see here, I, I, you know, these are some maintenance issues I had. One of them being the washer and dryer. I think one of the storm, storm doors blew off one for a bad storm we had in July or something like that. And then my interest taxes, insurance, maintenance, and then HOA is all pretty much streamlined right here. So this house is is really pretty pretty simple. Also, what I like about this that the HOA covers is they cover all exterior items. They cover roof. They cover windows. 
I don't have to worry about any of that. So I don't have to worry about that, that as an expense or a future CapEx issue. What I do have to take care of, the only thing on the outside is the AC unit. Unfortunately, this one has an older AC unit as well. So I'm just waiting for the call to happen and I'm expecting it to happen on the same day for both properties that I have to fork out some money to go get me a new AC unit on both of these. But so we're sitting at 5,830. So let's do this. Let's add these up in the calculator and I'll get an average monthly income from these properties. So that gives me a total income of $6,900. If I divide that by 12, that gives me an average monthly income of 575 bucks a month. So not bad, you know, I mean, every, every month I can expect to averagely earn $575 and 25 cents. So 575. Now with that, this will be up some years and this will be down some years. And if, if I can keep increasing rent, that's also going to help as well. I also forgot to mention this property. The second property has also gone up in value, purchased it for 135. I could probably turn around and sell it for like 150 to 160 right now. So not as, not as much appreciation as the first property, but I mean, the numbers look great. I mean, it's, it's solid cash flow. you know, five can't beat you know, almost six grand a, a year in income for, I mean, guys, I'm, I do nothing with these properties. I do nothing with them. I mean, my property manager takes care of, takes care of everything, and this is including her expenses. So, five hundred seventy-five bucks for two properties, and I'll say this: I am on the hunt for my third property. I have officially really started looking. The only problem that I think will delay me in buying my third rental property is my wife and I are still trying to figure out where the hell we're wanting to, to plant roots. So right now we're in Arizona, we're on my wife's travel nursing assignment, trying to stock away as much cash as we can to one, be able to, you know, purchase another rental property. But if we do move somewhere else, we'd like to have a lot of cash to be able to put a down payment on a property. If we decide to do that, we have no idea, but, but I will keep you guys updated on that and let you know what we do decide. Cause it is coming up here pretty soon. I'd say within the next six months, I mean, we're going to, we're going to have to know where we're going to be uh, uh, settling roots, planting roots rather, because my son starts first grade and we want him to start in school. Once I do settle down, I'll be able to take you guys a little bit more along the process of how I find properties. And depending on where I'm at, I also would like to do a little, take on a little bit more work of where I'm currently living and start building up a portfolio wherever that is in the near future as well. So guys, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate every single one of you who take the time out of your day to watch the videos. And until next one, you all take care.